Hey guys, how's it going? I'm going to take a little bit of time and bring into the garage this yard sale find eh, about two weeks ago. A John Deere LX178 garden tractor, lawn tractor, lawn mower. That is a fairly decent machine. It's a liquid cooled Kawasaki, I believe. Yeah. And uh, hydrostatic drive, a 44 inch mulching deck, and a snow blower. It, I've already cut my grass with it twice. I haven't done anything to it. Um, works decent, has some issues. So I want to bring it in the garage and kind of go through it and uh, give it a good service. So that's what we're about to go and do, but I figure I'll show you what we got first. Uh, one of the biggest things I kind of noticed is that it does not maintain RPM correctly. It almost like something's wrong with the governor or something along that line as far as um, like when you go put the mower deck on it or put something uh load on it whether you're driving it or not it doesn't maintain the rpm it drops and it raises let me see if i can show you See what I mean by like since I put the mower deck on, it just kind of dropped right off and didn't do, and didn't maintain that RPM. So uh, I feel like something's probably wrong with the governor or linkage going to the carb. So we'll get into that. I figure before we even start, I'm probably going to bring it over to the pressure washer, and we're just going to knock off all the heavy crap on the outside of it so that uh, it'll be a little bit more enjoyable to work on. Mower deck works. It's a little vibrating. We'll check underneath, see what's going on with that. That tire I know goes low. Possibly that one too. Over uh, about a, you fill it up about a week. It's it's down to what you see now. So. Yet, much better. Increase the value by 100 bucks already. All right, I'm gonna get the thing in the garage, go let it dry up a little bit, and go grab a bite to eat, and then uh, we'll get into it. And we're back. The floor is a little wet, the machine's pretty dry. So, I think probably the first thing we want to try to do, if it's not too much of a pain, is gonna be getting that, that hood off of there. I see one on each side here, I see one right down there. It looks like that one's already missing, but she somebody had it off before and this one's a pain in the ass to get to so it never went back in. I think that's going to be about it. it. Might be more hidden. So let's see if we can get that out of our way. It'll give us access to the front of the carb there. One bolt left. Hopefully. And I've never worked on one of these, so... You and I... Where are we going? Wires are already unplugged for the headlights. Anything. Good. That'll make life a lot easier. Some of the hoods are ridiculous to get apart though. So we want to get to where the governor setup is. Let's see if we get rid of that guy, that guy. That might be it. Yeah, let's get this. Feels like it's something in the middle is holding it. Yeah. Get rid of those two, then we'll be at the carburetor. Hey, I got the tin off of there. Now we can see the, the meat and potatoes. The, so this is the throttle cable coming down. It in turn is tied to this right here is the governor arm coming out of the engine, comes up got a spring on it and then that has an output up in here that goes off to the throttle of the carburetor so that's the butterfly in the carburetor that tells it how much the gas to give the carb now what a governor does is 
it governs the RPM. It tries to maintain the same RPM that the engine um, you have it set at. So say you have it set at uh, generally like a wide opens like 3600 RPM on, on most of the uh, the four stroke type engines and uh, maybe a little bit less. So if you hold it wide open, it wants to maintain 3600. Well, if you just grab the throttle and had the, had the throttle cable going directly to the throttle on the carburetor, it would uh, greatly increase over the top of that. It'd go up to, you know, you probably rev it up to about five grand or so. Um, why you don't want that to happen is because you want the implements that you're running to maintain an RPM. So as the mower deck kind of comes on, um, you want the governor to automatically try to maintain that 3600 rpms and what it has inside the engine there's a couple of different setups but inside the engine there's essentially um, a set of fly weights that run off of either the camera or the crank and as they spin faster they'll have the lever go back the opposite direction they want to try to maintain that that width of wherever they are so as they slow down it turns the arm one direction as it speeds up it turns the, the arm the other direction you can see the assembly moving over there as they turn it and some of them uh like lawn mowers and stuff a lot of them uh, a lot of the older ones have uh they come off the fan there'll be a fan on top of the engine and there's like a little bar or arm that kind of catches the fan and the more the fan spins the it'll try to correct itself and slow itself down and as the fan slows down the arm comes back in again off of you know again there's a fan right there on this one so a lot of those uh style have that and uh so somebody's been in here on this you can see that that adjustment's been changed you can see the the witness mark of where that bolt was slid up on this assembly and that probably is part of the governing system it looks like somebody made a homemade uh gasket for the intake i wonder if they clean the carb because that that kind of looks a little on the funky side. It was missing a bolt that we talked about. Actually, that bolt didn't have to come out. It just has to get loosened up. Those two just need to be loosened up and they'll slide out. And on the governor arm on this one, I can see a bunch of dirt around it. And I have a feeling that the arm, I'm looking at the space. Sure, I got you in the shot. I'm looking at the space between the arm and the block. I have a feeling that this arm is too far against this block and it might be causing a drag or a rub. That's one thing that could be a, a problem. Again, we see somebody tweaked the frame of it. It's out of adjustment. You can probably... That guy feels pretty free on the throttle input side. Just all the crap that's pegged see that i don't know if that just showed up i just rubbed the big pile of crap off of there too i'm gonna say i'm going to loosen that back up move it back to where it was we could probably fire it up on the bench and turn the deck on and see if that made any difference maybe just some from other people playing around with it if not we're gonna get the air box out of the way and get a little closer to it and maybe look down on it the other part that could have happened too if somebody got into it and played with it is the window of where that governor works so if you loosen up this pinch bolt and the shaft that's in here is is out of whack a little bit it's not in a range of where it needs to work it's not going to work correctly too so that also could be what the possibility is so but before we get into that and if no one's touched that i really don't want to play with it but um, that could be it and we'll mark that from where it's location and we'll try it in a couple of different spots but let's uh again we'll put this back to where it was on that bolt and see if it makes any difference Did anything? I give it a, I give it a 15% success rate. Let's go hop up there and see if that helps.
brought the RPMs up even higher. So definitely, someone's definitely been playing that. That is a homemade linkage right there. There we go. There's a there's an issue. That wire right there, it's a piece of copper. Well, there's our problem. Somebody screwed up. So for better access, I'm going to end up taking the radiator off the top, and uh, we could probably reinstall it so that we can run it. We need to get to that that linkage setup that's underneath there, but I want to get the coolant line down below. You know, into these hoses when I take it apart at home, it got total mess. Um, I don't see a drain on it anywhere. I looked real quick. I'm sure there is, but I'm just not seeing it. I figured it'd be our, our best avenue of attack. So I'm going to do that for a couple of minutes. And I'll bring you back when we get a little deeper into it. I was just able to pull the hose off once I got it down below that level and just held that down. And it looks like the rest of the crankcase will be able to drain out. Seems like it's working pretty good. Because we're only going to run it for a couple of seconds and not like we're going to run it for a long period of time once we start bouncing around with the governor. But I want to get, I like to keep all that stuff out of the way. It'll make our life a lot easier. See how much of a mess we can make. I think we're off the hoses. You know that direction. All right, what else we got? Don't know what's holding that down yet. Let's look if we can get the top half off. And then probably get the fan off and then get the other. Clamp's gotta come off. It has these funky clips in the front. So we go for the fan. Let's see, we get the fan out of there. And you see any more hardware? I have a feeling we're going to need to take these studs completely out. Yeah, and then I'll get the rest of it. You agree? get down there with a wrench or we just try grabbing with a pair of vice grips what do you want to try we'll try vice grips let's go give her a shot yeah. there's a washer on the bottom I don't want to lose so I'm gonna go take those four out and we'll get that cover off you know it's getting to be a bigger job when you have to go get, you have to upsize your metal tray. Alright, we are into the cab. Oh boy, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of funkery going on there. I say that linkage. Yeah, I think we're going to drop that down the intake, huh? It's also flooding over. The carb is, uh, I'll show you, that's another issue to deal with. So you can see in the bottom of the carb down there, how it looks like a swimming pool. That shouldn't be. So the needle and seat is probably not seating correctly and allowing the fuel, to fill, fuel bowl to fill up and over and dump down into the intake. But that looks like a... It's not exactly doing it. There's your bind right there. That's the bind right there. So what's happening is that as it tries to govern the throttle, 
it's pinching on that point it's not this should be relaxed and it's not so we're gonna go bend that back into submission this is for the choke this is a uh, another fine mess <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna set it up for back the way it was or not so we're gonna go replace that soft copper wire with something that's a little bit more substantial they could at least went with like a clothes hanger or something but I don't think they took all that off I think they tried working you know up under the air cleaner so I don't know, we'll go screw with the linkage first, then we'll pull the bowl off. I'm thinking. I might change that. I'm gonna take that apart. I'm gonna take a minute and knock some of the crap out of there. Possibly could have happened. I wonder if they may have pulled that carburetor off with all that stuff intact and just screwed up the linkages and weren't aware of it. Hey, let's see if we can bend that guy back into submission. I don't have a picture of what they look like. Sometimes they'll have a, a, a bit of a bend to them. We're going to go for a straight shot for now just because. And that spring, I'm not quite sure how it went around. And that helps uh, take some of the bounce out of it too for the, the bounce and throttle, give a little bit of drag to the system. Not sure how that was on there. I, a lot of times there's a separate little hole form. All right, keep the jokes to yourself. Let's go with. We're gonna go with that for now. And how does that feel? That's better. The choke is a joke. I wonder if um, that's why it smokes a little bit when it first start, starts up. It's just that it has a bunch of raw fuel in there. I am probably going to go. What we'll do is we'll set the throttle all the way up so that the choke is in the on position. And we'll make a rod up so that's full on. Yeah, that was too short. Now, if that was bent... I shifted that back it would be even longer so yeah I'm gonna make a rod up that goes from there to there out of something much better than that all right so in my stash I found a carb and we're gonna go steal the rod off of that and we'll bend that up to give us what we need I'm probably just gonna straighten it out and we'll start over and which way is choke? That's choke, and that's all the way on. So we need to get to that point, and uh, yeah. <laughs> I left that top end in there. It'll help clear the linkage, I think. I don't know if that's showing up the angle you guys are seeing. But let's see, we want that. We're going to mark. That's where we need our bend. The other tricky part is we got to get all that on there, too. You know? I say a little bit of persuasion is in order. All right, we want to bend that one that way. That one that way. Okay. And that back. Let's see how that works. That's choke. Full on. There we go. Full throttle. Idle. Full throttle. And choke. I think we're good. Alright, I'm going to go drop that float bowl. And uh, take a peek inside there while we're this far in. Let's get that out of there. Piss some gas, let that go. Okay. 
Yeah, it's got a little bit of crap in it. Not terrible, though. Again, because it's such a pain in the ass to clean, it's a good time to go and do that. I'm also going to go pull that needle and see. Yeah, I bet you somebody pulled that carb uh, bowl set up or, or tried pulling it out of there without taking the stuff off the top, and then they just kind of manhandled those linkages back in there and screwed them up. Now, I'm going to go get that float out of there, go clean that seat, and we'll put it back together. going to have to be driven out. Well, there should be that much coolant left in it, but I throw the radiator back up just in case the water pump on one side decides to push it. And I think we got fairly decent room to a tie wrap on there too. So we're going to go fire it up and uh, we're going to do the same. We're going to run the mower deck and listen to the RPMs. And with all this stuff off of here, we'll be able to, to tweak our uh, whatever adjustment we need without uh, having some interference. Hey, let's give her. Turn it down to an idle. It might take a second too because there's no gas in it. Good, but we need more RPM. get too hot and cook it uh, there's gonna be an adjustment right here too we should be able to bump the rpms up also so I'm gonna go crank that up a little worst case we could also kind of pull on the uh, spring a little more too actually maybe I'll bring that bracket down just a hair we'll give that a little this way Leave it like that for now. Uh, I think it doesn't sound that like it's revving that high, but it actually is. It's a uh, liquid cooled engine without the fan on it. Put the fan back on it, more of a noise is going to kind of kick up. I do have a uh, RPM gauge that I'm going to go check though. So, what this thing is an RPM ga gauge, it'll tell you how fast it's going. You put a little piece of uh, reflective tape on the flywheel and you could read it from there. So, that's what we're going to go do and uh, see where it is. Let's see if we can get a reading off of that. So we are right at 3,700. Yeah, probably come down just a little bit. I think I might even just leave it right where it is. It should be fine. Uh, nah, I'm gonna bump it down a hair. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go for like 
like 36. Close enough, we're splitting hairs on that. Well, it definitely still has a problem with uh, flooding over still because I shut it off and you saw the smoke on it. We gotta get that. It probably needs a needle and seat that I do not have at the moment. But let's go take a look inside there and see if there's any way to adjust it. The float is plastic and generally the, the plastic floats, you can't bend the tab to, to change the float level. Take a look anyway. Might possibly be able to, be able to source it locally. Again, just because it's a, a fairly a bit of a pain in the ass to uh, get in there, but I don't want to. Uh, see all the gas pissing. When I took this nozzle off, it, it dumped a bunch of gas out, just like we saw before. If I caught it. Video. Right, let's go. Make sure we don't set ourselves on fire dumping fuel everywhere. And I'm pretty sure this is why this stuff got bent up last time. So like that. And then kind of manhandle it. Also looks like those gaskets are definitely homemade. Yeah. I would not exactly call that a factory gasket. Or the one that just fell down there. A factory one. Alright. Looked at it quick when it was on there. Yeah, that's a lot of fuel for a little area. I'm gonna go tap that pin out of there and we'll get the float off. Alright. You can not hit you with the vise. The hammer, rather. Yeah, you guys are a little too close. Hold on one sec. I don't want to be responsible for your black eye. We need something very tiny. Pick that guy up. Hold on. Sometimes the little pin on top, the little spring loaded pin, that fails too. Feels right. I want to say, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get this on camera, that the little seal, I'm trying to get this, let me get my headlight on it maybe, I don't know if you guys, that's probably too much light is the problem. Bear with me. Problem is, I, I see it perfect, I and mean, you guys are going to look at it. You can't. That little seal looks like the um, it's sitting on a slight angle, and that would do it. So I am going to go. I even just pop that guy right out of there. Make sure it's not putting it upside down. Somebody may have been again. Somebody was here before us. So that guy is not looking like it's seating correctly. Yeah, it's probably her issue. I'm going to do my best to try to not launch it across the room. I'm going to try pushing it up with air first. Because the more I go to paw at it with a, uh, a pick or something, the more any kind of scratches you put in it, the more you stand a chance of destroying it. 
No, I was wrong. See, generally on a metal one, what you can do is you can take this tab on the float and you bend that up a little bit and it allows you to change the angle of the float. I want to go hit that with a pick and I'm worried that I may have done it some damage. It's like that's brass. It's pretty polished though. I'm not seeing... Again, sometimes that pin... I'll look at my stash and see if I have one. So I decided to run to my local uh, power equipment place. That wouldn't be good. Use the needle. And I wanted to go see if I could go find a carb kit for it. And they do not list a kit for it. You can buy pieces individually, but they don't essentially sell the kit. But they did the print out on it. And if you'll notice, you can see the, the needle, but it does not list a separate seat. So what's in the carb is what stays in the carb. It can't be changed. Um, I'm also looking at the needle, not saying that this picture um, denotes everything correctly. The only thing I do notice is... I don't see the pin sticking out of the bottom of that, whether that is uh, just an oversight or maybe somebody was in there. And they put the wrong needle in there is another possibility. So I think what we're going to do, and it takes a week to get it. That's the other problem. I just kind of want to move forward with it. So what we might do is we might take a, the Q, old Q-tip in the drill and some um, lapping compound and maybe try to polish that guy up inside there. And or we're going to look in the hoard, see what else what we have for needles and see if we can find one that is maybe a little bit better. And I, I also do think that the pin on this sometimes does not seem like it, it travels all the way up. And like that maybe the spring on the inside is a little on the on the beat side. So I'm gonna come up with something. Alright, to the junk door of carburetor of carburetors gone by. What is that? It's a bing setup. Those are all going to be too large. We want one that's about that big. We want the right dimension, but way too long. What about, is that the same float? I'm going to figure out which one was the one that was in it. We're going to go try, see how that float fits and see if that shuts off a little bit better, I think. Don't lose that guy. Yeah, next thing we got is just super tiny. Oh well. We tried. I feel like I just did this on the last video because I just did this on the last video. Alright, a little lapping compound. Let's see. We can make that guy. As smooth as possible. We'll get rid of that one. Put another fresh one on there. Call it a day for that. I think I done broke it. And anyway, rinse that out, we'll put it back together. I'm not sure if uh, the other float is going to work, but we'll put it in there and see how it is anyway. All right, let's go fire it up one more time. Carp is all back together. Make sure my throttle is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Idle, the throttle, and choke. Yep, let's try it without the choke. How about a little hand choke? We'll let it run for a second and 
then uh, we'll shut it off see if it floods over. As long as that does not turn into a puddle of gas down there, should be fine. I'm going to start uh, reassembling the tin on top because no matter what, it's still going to go back together. So I'm going to start getting this part ready. We'll let that sit, keep an eye on it, and I'll bring you back. Nope, unfortunately it's still doing it. Look at all the gas that's in there. That is not good. All right. I gotta go shopping for parts, but again, I'm still gonna put it all back together anyway. So one of the drawbacks of the carburetor over flooding like that is that it has a tendency, it depends on what style it is, you know, some can be just a little bit and it'll evaporate, but some, if the gas tank is higher than the carburetor, it'll just keep flowing and flowing. It fills up the, the cylinders and then finally gets past the rings and it fills up the crankcase. I'm gonna drain the oil on this anyway, but uh, sometimes what it'll do, it'll, it'll Thin the oil way out. That looks normal on this. And you're all of a sudden your oil's over full. I don't have a filter for this, so I'm gonna. Well, that looks pretty dirty, so it probably should go for two. It's gonna go for one now, and we're gonna work on what we got. We're gonna do an assessment afterwards, and I'll probably place an order. And this this thing will need a second round as far as uh, all that stuff is concerned but as long as you get the mechanicals working to like they should with it running the way it should which I, I believe we have corrected now this is one of those ones where you gotta <laughs> kind of stay with it I guess in the tractor this way just a hair you should get a little more out of it And I'm pretty sure that when it blows that puff of smoke when we first start it, that's just, just too much fuel. The carb was uh, 98 bucks, and through you know the local dealer, I can, I'm going to look on eBay and see what it is. If it's like a $40 carburetor, we'll grab one. Also, yes, I'm going to do my best to get most of the oil out of it. We're going to... Pop that filter off and let it let that drain also. You see that oil is not that bad. You can, you can at least see through it. What a good look running little engine. Nice and quiet. I hear all the tires up to 15 PSI. I'm gonna run around just a little bit and see if I see anything. It's not as good as driving it in a lake. But. Let them sit and we can rotate it a little too. If we don't see anything, we'll get the bottom spot. I don't even remember if I filled these up all the way. I may have just kind of ran over to it and gave it a quick uh, something to give it. They all seem to go down over time, you know, if something sits for a year or something. Any modern stuff, it seems like it. I'm not going to do all those and let it sit. And a little wash down. Don't see anything on the backs. I do think I see sidewall failure right here and tighten you guys are loose there you go so I think we're having an issue yeah so what it is it's kind of a um, I can see a bubble over there too a uh, 
once the tire starts getting a slight leak in it, then it has a tendency to drive on it where it's kind of flat and it even beats up the sidewalls even more. Uh, I am going to slime this guy. Guy, people talk about the, uh, you know, why didn't I slime the tires on the go kart? The problem with um, putting the slime on the inside of it, it uh, becomes a uh, wheel balance issue. So anything that, you know, garden tractors are fine. Anything that's running around the yard at 10 mile an hour, it's not going to make a difference. But if you want something that's going to do 30, you know, you get up over around 30 miles an hour, it'll start greatly affecting how the thing goes down the road, you know. So you don't want to use them in cars, motorcycles, you know, mopeds you really want to stay with. The go kart, um, yeah, probably could have done it on the go-kart. I don't see an issue there. Yeah, it's definitely. So, let's get on to that. I don't you can be able to see, but the uh, valve stem has to come out. This is a valve stem tool. It catches the center of the stem. You want to get all the air out of it. You actually kind of need it. Yeah. If anything, you actually kind of want to draw in a little bit. But that's, you just don't want air pushing back. When you're trying to fill it so you want to take all of it right out and then because you are trying to push a heavy a heavy um fluid and you want the stem out of there so it could travel around it you know because air can travel around a little valve no problem but when you uh put the stuff that's supposed to clog holes up it takes its uh space so i'm not endorsing this i'm not paid endorsement it is just something I picked up. I do like it. It's expensive. You know, it was expensive. I, I probably bought this about two years ago. And uh, they had a, a thing set up. Actually, the same tractor place I was uh, at today. The, uh, hold on a sec. the stuff is like, uh, I think it was 50 bucks a gallon for it back then. And, you know, you use a fair amount of it for a fairly large tire. But I do find it works much better than some of the other uh, ones that were on the market. The, so the idea now is push some air out of it. Gotta pay attention to what I'm doing. Let the air out of it. It's kind of under a vacuum. And you make a. What's <laughs> <laughs> that look like? All right. So, and then you just backfill. And so much per tire, go for a decent amount. What's really kind of nice is if you have the tire off, you can kind of like envision in your mind where the stuff is in the tire and move the tire around for it so it kind of like goes over into all those pores. We're going to call that. I can get it off. There you go. And done deal. Put that stem in, fill it back up, and then as it drives, it'll seal itself. Hopefully. It's just happy it's getting fixed, that's all. That's all. That's filled back up. Let's see if we can get her in the air there a little bit. And see how it wants to go back? That's, that's all the material sitting in one spot. So if you, the tire's spinning really fast, and that weight is just like hanging a weight in the wrong spot. Plus, it, it does even better when you drive around because when the weight is on the tire and the tire is flexing and the stuff is getting in there, wherever the crack that kind of opens up and closes, it allows it to push even far, farther in and get kind of locked into little rubber voids. You're sick of looking at that, I know. I am too. Now well, we got the jack under it. Why don't we take a look at what we have for blades. So I said this is set up as a mulching deck. And they're more of a flat blade than a blade for lift because they kind of just want the material to you know go around and get chopped up in little bits and evenly get spread back out in the lawn. So this deck is actually designed for that. It doesn't have any exit chutes on it. It's the style of it. It does really good. I've uh, I've run it around the yard a couple of times in tall grass, and when you're done, you don't see any resemblance. I would say that 
It's funny how the back end is sharp and the front end is dull. It's not that they're upside down, it's just that they're wore out on the front to get beat up and then the back end are so sharp just from stuff kind of going over them. So uh, those guys are going to need to be addressed. I'm just looking to see if I need any else. Is that in one bent? That guy might be bent. Let's go over the other side and spin that one. See how these look like they're fairly straight? We got the last one. Looks like it kind of dips down a little. Let's go. We're going to go measure that one. Can I remember where it is? I'll cut my hand. That one's pretty good. It's both around the same spot. Let's go check out the other one. I just want to show something. You see the distance between these two blades? They are on the same plateau. I can reach the front end. Belts look okay too. I see any issue with them. Let me see if I can get you in here. I gotta rotate it somewhere too. So that you get it lined up to. There we go. Can you see the difference between that guy and that guy? That. She's bent on both sides. You can see how far. I was able to see it from the other side. You can see how far that's kind of curving down. So for now, we're just going to take that off and do a little bending on it. See if we can get it back to the original shape. Look, at it. it's what I'm going to do. I'm not telling you what to do. That's what I'm going to do on this. I'll take my word for it. This is always a little sketchy. <laughs> Told you. It definitely needs blades, don't get me wrong. Just that we're not putting them on right now because we don't have them. Yeah, we'll make a shopping list. This is the preliminary. <laughs> this is seeing what we got. <laughs> fix the issue so you can pretty much see how much they're in the downward position that needs to lay more flat all right let's see if we can get anywhere the gentle act of persuasion these guys are beat needs a new set Nothing saying we can't address some of the issues. That's a one. You got to change the memory of it. That one's good. This one needs more. This one needs to go. A little more that way. I'd say we are pretty good. Might have went here too far. <laughs> Tweaks it a little more. As the bleed lays flat and you want them flat. That one looks good. That one's uphill a hair. That's the one I said. I thought it went over just a little. Close enough though. And back on. That looks a little better. Within the same realm anyway. Is that cup in the right spot? Yes, yes it is. Okay. The job is done here. The other thing that I see, which I don't think is right, is, wait a second, 
the um, the level that that one's on, and the level that the back one is on. And why would the back be lower than the front? Sometimes uh, some decks get set up kind of weird though, so that it may be supposed to be that way. But I'm gonna make them all evil, evil, <laughs> even, and uh, see where that takes us. And if we find that it's different, I can set it back. I don't think so. And belts look decent. I'm gonna lube up a um, little neck right there. Yeah. Definitely good enough to run for a long time. Yeah. So you can tell even just by the way the tire is worn on this one, it is just gone because it never got any of that. So that should keep it from getting any worse, but it could use a wheel on that side too. Well, it's all it's getting today. Should probably stop it from rolling and smashing into the sheet metal. Yeah, well. Let's go cut some grass. Oh, I gotta push the pin in. I got it in roll mode. There we go. On a hydro, you gotta push the pin so it can roll freely. That sounds better. I gotta roll up the hose because it makes it a little hard to cut the grass. It makes it interesting. It's a little hard to cut the grass. I gotta say, that's a nice little machine. It's the quietest gas-powered mower I've ever run around. It's, uh, the engine helps and the, the design of that deck does. For the crappy blades that are on it, it runs decent, cuts the, gas, the grass decent. I would say it's fairly even. I don't see too many shelfy spots. Not that my lawn's all that great. I think we're gonna call it on this. I think it's as far as we're gonna get. Uh, tonight we may revisit again may not I have a snowblower attachment for it too that came with it so if I run this till the uh, the fall maybe we'll set it up with the uh, snowblower and try it that we got snowblower the weights are already hanging on the back it's got chains here's the weights it has a seat cover I took it off for now they're kind of it's like <laughs> it's like slip, loose slip covers or seat covers on your car you just kind of slide all around the place so, it's all right for now how many times I've moved that stuff and never sat in it? 
So I'm gonna go probably check on the internet tonight for uh, a carb and some blades. Uh, might need something else too, not sure. And uh, that's it, we're gonna wrap it up. I wanna thank all of you for kinda hanging out in the garage and doing some wrenching with me and having some fun with the yard sale stuff. So until then, I'll see you later.